Hill, I'm Mike. And I'm Carrie Ann. If you love drinking coffee, being a couple, and putting Christ first, this is the podcast for you. Love, love over, over coffee. Welcome back to episode number 13 of Love Over Coffee. Hello, we are so excited to have you guys back. Yeah, absolutely. So today we're going to talk about our AeroPress, another aspect of marriage, which is worshiping together. And then we're going to talk about the deep love assessment that we took. Yeah. Yeah, so now you got some nice hot coffee in front of us to start off our day. Sure. Yeah, we always do. So the AeroPress, it's a... It's a really cool little coffee maker. I think I've talked about it before, and I'll put some pictures or maybe link a video on Facebook so you can see it, but it's basically a giant syringe that you make coffee with. It's a new take on a French press. Uh, basically, what you do is you get your water hot, you grind your coffee, usually to a very fine grind, and then you put it in the syringe. And then you bloom your coffee. And basically what that means is you put a little bit of water on your ground coffee and it soaks up the water, kind of wakes it up. You'll see it start to bubble and look kind of frothy, which is a good sign. That means you have nice fresh coffee. If you ever pour water on a coffee and nothing happens, there's no frothing or no bubbling or like no tan foam on top of it. Uh, throw it away. That means it's old, stale coffee. You don't want to drink it. But anyway, you let it bloom for 15 to 30 seconds, and then you fill the syringe up the rest of the way with, with hot water. And then it has like a regular, not a regular coffee filter, but if you think of your white normal coffee filter that you would use in an electric coffee pot, it looks just like that except for it's cut out in a circle the size of the syringe. And this is, when I say a syringe, it's not a small one. It's probably about, you know, the width, uh, it's probably about two inches across probably. Uh, you put your cap on it and then you just, uh, wait another 30 to 45 seconds for the coffee to brew. And then you just sl- you flip it upside down, sit on top of your cup and then push the coffee through the filter. And when you're done, we, I usually top mine off with a little bit more water, but it's, uh, it's a really neat little coffee maker. They're inexpensive. Uh, I think they're like 30 bucks and it comes with the AeroPress itself, a bunch of filters. Uh, the filters last forever. I think when I originally bought it, I got the filters that came with it and I bought another pack and I still probably got a couple hundred of them left. So they last forever. They come with a paddle for mixing the coffee up once you pour the water in it, just to make sure you don't have dry coffee sitting on the bottom, just kind of, you know, mix it up and get it all, all moved around. Uh, and it also comes with a scoop, but the nice thing about it, it's like super lightweight. Uh, it comes with a little pouch to carry it all in. Uh, You could take it hiking if you're into that and make, you know, coffee out on the trail. I've even traveled with it before, N- not recently, but I've tossed it in my bag. And instead of drinking the coffee at the Holiday Inn Express lobby, you can just get the hot water, take a little bit of coffee with you and make it yourself. Yeah, but it's definitely very delicious. Yeah, It's really one of my favorite ways to make coffee. Though I guess one of the downfalls to it is it doesn't make very much coffee. Mm-hmm. So, If you're just making coffee for yourself, it's actually pretty quick that way, and you get really a really good cup of coffee out of it. If you're making coffee for two people, that's still a little bit manageable. It takes a little bit more time, but once you're talking three or four people, you really want to switch to a different different method. It doesn't come in different sizes like the French presses because I think you can get a bigger French press to make maybe Mm -hmm. four cups of coffee. This one's advertised as one to three cups, but I've only ever gotten one cup of coffee out of it. Well, the next thing that we kind of, um, that we want to talk with you about is, um, the spiritual aspects of marriage. So these may sound really basic and they kind of are, but they're really important. So just like last week, we spoke about serving together. This week, we're just going to touch briefly on worshiping together, which is one of my favorite, um, spiritual aspects of our marriage. There's just something about standing next to Mike at church and just worshiping and just feeling God move in us and really just focusing on God and having our hands raised. But I think what's really neat too, that we personally do when we worship together is we hold hands. Yeah, yeah that's nice. And it just makes uh, doing it that much nicer. At yes. first, 
it's kind of awkward a little mm-hmm. bit. You feel kind of uncomfortable. You know, there's people around you singing really loud and raising their hands mm-hmm. and they're all into it and you're new and don't know the words of the song and don't know what's quite going on. So at first it's, it's kind of a security blanket. Yeah. And then once you get through that, it's just a really good way to grow together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, like we'll hold hands, we'll have the other hand and you know what I love, babe. And I'm like, this is so me. So, you will never find me trying out for the voice or American Idol because I have an awful singing voice. Believe it or not, I was in choir. But somewhere in the Bible, man, I should have found this verse, but it says, make a joyous noise. And I'm like, yes, because that is what I do when we worship together. I make a joyous noise and it makes God happy. I'm not a good singer either. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't, but no. it, that you shouldn't let that stop you. No, no, not at all. Yeah. And then we have another um, Bible verse that I really like that goes along with worshiping together. And it's from Colossians 3.16. And it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And just a little side note, what really stuck out to me there is, yes, it speaks about singing psalms to God, but it talks about thankfulness. And sometimes that's really hard to do when I worship is just to be thankful, especially if life isn't going how I want it to. So that kind of struck me in the gut when I read it this week. Worshiping together, it's a uh, it's a great way to start the week. It you know, is. Sunday is the first day of the calendar week. You wake up Sunday morning and go do that first thing. It's like an excellent way to start the week together, yeah. kind of get your head on straight and get you on track. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So this deep love assessment, what yes. do you think about that? So I loved it. Well, I guess maybe we should tell them where we got it from first. Yes. So we actually got this. Um, we went to fight night, which is with Les Parrot. Um, his wife, Leslie, wasn't there, but you may know who they are. They're pretty popular in um, the Christian sphere. But they wrote quite a few books, including the one we went through with our premarital counseling. Yes. Yep. Yeah, which was Saving Your Marriage Before It Starts. So we went to fight night and they spoke about ways, you know, to communicate, fight well. And then they had this on sale there. Now, we didn't buy it there, but we thought it was pretty cool. And I'm kind of nerdy when it comes to tests. So I was maybe just a little bit too excited to take it. Yeah, but I like it, though. It was really cool. I'll be honest. When I first took it, I thought, you, you know, you log in, you go online, you pay for it. I don't remember how much it cost. It was, it was like, 35 Yeah, 35 hours. You pay for it, you go online, and then you basically do a survey. And when I was doing it, the first thing I thought of are those silly Facebook, you know, surveys that pop up. Oh, you just like George Clooney. I don't know. <laughs> but I was thinking this is, I can't believe I paid 35 hours for this as I was going through and taking the survey. But I was surprised when I got done. I wasn't too impressed with taking the actual survey, but it seems pretty accurate and it has a whole bunch of good information in it. Yeah, it really does. Um, so my first thoughts was I was actually a little bit opposite of Mike. Now, keep in mind, I told you I was a nerd for personality tests. So they had some like where you choose, I think like you choose like a cluster of words and choose the best one. And it was all these different little questions. You had to rank some things and that was kind of hard because some of those I'm kind of, there was like some rank, some things you have conflicts with. And a lot of them I'm like, I don't have conflicts with any of these, but I loved it. But again, I love stuff like that. But even with Mike, with the results, the results wowed me more than anything else. And I would say it's pretty 90% accurate for us. And it really does go deep. It's a good $35 worth. There are ways, I guess we were similar, but a lot of ways that were different. Mm -hmm. And I think what's really neat is, I mean, just in that first page of the personality that's why I really got out of it. As when it spoke about, I was a cooperative spouse saying you were deliberate. We were like, wow. Yeah, we can't share the whole test with no. you because it's, uh, when you get the report, it's 10 pages long. Yeah. Yeah. And, We'd be here all day. And then they give you like sort of an action plan to help you go through this stuff. But if you just want to read our, our first ones to him, like the cooperating spouse and then sure. you do yours and I can do mine. Sure. Yeah. I can definitely do that. And these are what we thought was um, really accurate. Um, so the cooperating spouse, this is what said for me, your natural interest in people can cause you to not always prioritize functionality. Truth. You are so busy with others that you lose track of time and may cause conflict with your on time spouse. You have a high trust level for others. Occasionally, you may have trusted too much and were stunned in the process. Your natural optimism, however, tends to pull you out of such slumps. 
you have to be with people. This extends into the need to gain popularity, achieve social recognition, and influence those people around you, including your spouse. The bottom line is a strong people orientation. You have a strong sense of humor, and you usually know when to lighten a difficult situation, amuse, and entertain people. Yeah, now that seems pretty accurate. Yeah. You know, the only thing I don't know about, though, is the social recognition. Yeah. And the popularity. Yeah. I mean, I know you like being around people and like going to, you know, Bible study and different group things and stuff like that. But I don't know if it's a popularity thing. No. And that was that was the same with me. That was the one thing I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm not all about. Let me go get in with these people. I'm kind of just like, I love people, but I don't feel this need to, yeah, gain popularity. Right. Yeah. Okay. So mine was deliberating spouse. You function best in an environment relatively free of conflict or hostility. When tension mounts, you may become silent, and if tension continues, you may withdraw or avoid the situation altogether. You prefer to wait until you're sure of your ground before acting. This might mean after several visits to a new place or after a few meetings with a new person, you'll feel more open to risk or share trust. When a new activity is considered, you may require support or encouragement by your spouse to participate or perform in the new activity. You prefer not to seek quick personal relationships, but rather build relationships slowly. Once your relationships are are formed, they tend to be lasting. And that one's pretty spot on for me. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I don't like going new places. Mm -hmm. uh, And sometimes I dread going new places or going to events Mm -hmm. or things like that. But once I get there, perfectly Mm -hmm. fine, have a great time, everything else. The same thing with conflict or hostility. I just prefer not to deal with it. I think a lot of times Mm -hmm. it's silly. I mean, it does happen. You're never going to get away from it. Yeah, that's right. I'd rather just avoid it or or withdraw from it. Yeah, and what was really neat in that is, like, I know you're very thorough. You know, you like to know how things work and why they work and have a really thorough plan. And that's part of being deliberate. And what I thought was really neat on this test too, and you all out there will find that really neat too, is yes, we have these long descriptions, but every um, type of personality has three words to go along with it. It's like mine is service oriented, peacekeeper and patient. Yeah. And mine's uh devoted, accurate and disciplined. Yeah. And I would totally agree with that. Uh, eh, disciplined in most things. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not our walking <laughs> or not eating ex- healthy. Not exercise or eating healthy. Pretty much everything else I got, though. Everything else, you know, that's not fun. But come on, eating burgers is fun. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we do have to be more disciplined, eat more salads than burgers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what's some other topics that this test covers? Um, let's see. It also covered communication, which that is a huge one in marriage. And I think it's one that you'll never, ever get perfect. And I don't think we're supposed to, but that was another one kind of spoke about our communication styles. What I thought was really neat there was just, it has, how would you like your spouse to communicate with you? And that was neat because it just didn't say, this is how you communicate with your spouse. It's like, this is what you need. Yeah. You know? And I thought that was pretty accurate. Like what we just read before, the deliberating spouse and the cooperating spouse, those paragraphs, that was Mm -hmm. for our personality. It does Mm -hmm. the same thing. It gives you the same type of uh, paragraph breakdown Mm -hmm. describing you, uh, your communication as a deliberating spouse or cooperative spouse. And uh, that's pretty neat. We're not going to bore you and read all those, but we're just going to touch through the topics. But it talks about how you'd like your spouse to communicate with you, and then it talks about communication skills that you would like to improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like it. Now, you know what I noticed, though, babe, going through this test, and it could just be that's kind of very difficult to do in a test like this, is I noticed that um, they had the topics of intimacy and finances. And in those topics, it seemed like they really didn't give many practical tips. It was more of your spouse said this, and here you go. Well, and something else we'll have to come back and and cover later is the action plan. Mm -hmm. And after we have to work our way through it. And I think the action plan set where you can do it like dates, right? Yeah. 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 It's four dates. So I'm wondering if there's not more tips in the action plan. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to check that out and we'll come back and and touch on the action plan when we get it done. Because they said there's several topics and the action plan is not something I don't know. I would think it'd take a couple of weeks to work through that yeah. action plan. Yeah, that'd definitely be fun date nights. And thanks to you and your thoroughness, you were the one that found that because Mike um, goes, oh, yeah, you know that deep love action plan? Or I was like, what? 
what are you talking about? And he goes, it was writing your email, babe. And I'm like, you're right. And that totally shows how we're totally different. He's, I'm very broad. Life is good. You're very thorough. You look at everything. Folks, now you see how that works. Yeah. But it totally works in our marriage. Yeah. Um, but it, it goes on to the uh, intimacy and it has a little, I don't even know what kind of graph this is, but how each of you would improve your sex life. Yeah. And then uh, it's got a, it's got some questions in there for you to ask each other. You know, one of them's how do your top desires compare? Elaborate on the qualities you chose. How would each of you complete this? The thing that would improve your love life most for me. And so it gives you some yeah. cues and some things to talk about. And then after that, it goes into another topic about let's talk about sex. Mm-hmm. Some of the things it covers in there is how do you rate your desire, my attentive to your spouse's needs. And it gives you the ratings on how you answer the questions. Are you comfortable uh, talking about sex? And how often do you have sex? Yeah. And just with these questions, when you're taking that test, I mean, throughout all of it, just be completely honest because that's how those conversations are going to happen. You know, because if you rate everything highly satisfied because you don't want a conflict, this really isn't really going to help you as much as it can. Right. You know, this is meant to be a conversation starter. Right. So on the how often you expect sex one, I wasn't quite honest on that one. <laughs> I used a negotiation tactic of where I shot for the moon in case she came back lower and I had some negotiation <laughs> <laughs> power. Um, I had some, I had some wiggle room there. So, but yeah, in general though, you yeah. want to be accurate with this. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't do you any good to, you know, idealize when you ask the questions, you know, just be honest and, and straightforward. Yeah. 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 And then another topic is, uh, conflict. Yes. And again, kind of just like communication, that is a huge one, especially when you might have a spouse who like cries super easily. I mean, totally not me. I totally don't cry at all. (laughs) Yeah. I had a tough, I had a tough time with this one answering questions because you go through and ask the questions. And one of the thing it spits out is hot topic. So basically what issues are prone to conflict for your spouse and you? And, you know, right now we don't really have a whole lot of conflict yeah. in our marriage. Yeah. So I went through and I picked like the popular ones on uh-huh. that one. So that's one where I wasn't really honest with it, but I also, I felt there weren't, I don't know. It was difficult for me to even answer those in the first yeah. place right now. Yeah. And you made sure to explain that to me. Cause I think when I first saw that list, I'm like, what? This yeah. is an issue. I, I, I don't understand. Yeah. You know, and then you're like, no, 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 babe. But yeah, those were hard. Cause even like the five I listed down, I'm like, I'm like, well, maybe we may have had a slight tiff about it, which may have been 10 seconds long. And then we totally forgot about it. Yeah. But that one was still pretty good. Cause they do talk about your personal conflict challenges and the things that can limit your ability to successfully manage conflict. Yeah, why don't you give one of yours as an example? Let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. I can definitely... Yes, I think I still do this to you every day. On occasion, you may oversell ideas to your spouse when it's not necessary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> story of our marriage or I have to like start off a story and actually Les spoke about this at fight night. I have to give Mike a background on everything for about 30 seconds before I ask him the question. I can't just ask him. I have to tell him a story that goes behind my question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. One of mine was, uh, you mentally collect your spouse's mistakes to save up and defend your position. You know, that's, yeah. That one, I, I mean, I try not to, but yeah. I, I definitely, even if you, if even if I don't do them now, I do have a tendency, you know, to do to do that. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, but what's nice is this kind of brings those things to the forefront. Like until fight night, at least for me, and with this one of overselling until fight night and this test, I didn't even realize I did it. So now I still kind of do it, but in the back of my head, I'm always thinking, Kieran, stop it! You yeah. don't need to do that." Yeah, and the next one it goes into is finances. Mm-hmm. Let's see, we're both spenders. Uh huh. You know, that's something you have to be careful of. Yeah. I don't know that we buy a whole lot of stuff, but we like to go out and have coffee and go out to dinner and 
go on vacations and things like yeah. that. We're not really out buying the little random things all the time. I mean, we like to eat. Remember that conversation we had about five minutes ago about being disciplined? Yeah. Yeah. You see it in our bank account too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I literally, we, we literally ate out five times this week. We did, but yeah. it was so good. Yeah. So <laughs> we're definitely, um, spenders, uh, but more experiences than, than, mm-hmm. than gadgets. Yeah. And in my mind, that's perfectly justified. Yes. Um, but anyway, and then it talks about, uh, what's the next one, babe? Um, the the uh, next one, the next topic is uh, adaptability. Because really, finances, I mean, it kind of just goes over, like, your questions. So, like I said, that's one that it kind of just goes over, like, what you answered in the quiz. But the next one is adaptability. And this is one, babe, where I actually... This one, I'm kind of like, eh, I didn't really feel like I fell into a whole lot of it because this one said that my, um. Hey, can we go back to finances yeah, real quick? Yeah. yeah sorry. Um, yeah. When I met yeah. the next one, I was talking about, oh, yeah. yeah. One of the things with finances is uh-huh. my attitude is either you have money or you don't have money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But kind of off topic. One of the things that we've been doing is this envelope thing yes. and we've been doing it electronically and it kind of goes back to the spending. Mm hmm. And this is just kind of a little tip off topic, but, uh, there's this app called envelopes mm-hmm. and we each have it on our phone and then you can go to their website as well. But it's, uh, who does that envelope? Uh, that's a uh, Dave Ramsey. Yeah. So it's kind of, yeah. I guess, based off of that. Mm-hmm. We have, we haven't taken that financial piece or whatever mm-hmm. they call it. Financial piece. We haven't yeah. taken that yet, but, um, we got this envelope thing and it's really great because you can put all of your bills in envelopes. You can put, Carrie Ann has her own spending envelope mm-hmm. for her personal stuff. I have my own spending envelope for my personal stuff. We have one for date night. Mm-hmm. We have one for emergency fund, saving, uh, vacation, mm-hmm. electric bill, you name it. But the good thing about it is it's a good way for you to spend money without mm-hmm. feeling guilty about it. You figure out what your budget is. You take care of all the major things first, and then we give ourselves an allowance uh, for those things, and then... You know, there's some folders where we still have to have discussions before we spend money, Mm -hmm. but Carrie Ann has her own folder envelope Mm -hmm. and I have mine. So we can basically buy whatever we want as long as we got the money and it's in there. When the money's gone, the money's gone. The next time we get paid, we add back to it. Uh, Same thing with date night. You know, yeah, we went out five times this week, but... We had the money in our date uh-huh. night envelope, so it was budgeted, so yeah. we can do it. So it's that's a little bit off topic, but it's a really good way to manage your money. The thing that I like about it too is you look specifically at the envelopes yes. versus your bank account, yes. so you can see I have a hundred dollars left to spend here, and you're not even looking at your savings. You know, before it's like, oh, I got. I don't know, a thousand dollars in there. So I can, you know, nickel and dime it at the soda machine mm-hmm. at work. And, but you can see, okay, I only have five bucks left in my yeah. personal spending account. So eh, I don't have to bass on that, you know, diet yeah. Mountain Dew from the vending machine. No. Yeah. I mean, it really has helped with that. And even like in the personal spend, I mean, you're really thinking about like what you want. And I'm sure, babe, you can see for me, there's much less, the company at my work is called company kitchen. There's probably much less company kitchen charges <laughs> yeah, quite since a bit. we started that. But anyway, that was totally off topic, but yeah. I couldn't pass pass it up while we're oh. talking about finances. Yeah, so, absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, the next one's uh, adaptability. Yeah. This is the one that I was kind of like, eh, I didn't quite agree with because for either of us, because it said like for me that maintaining resilience can be a challenge. And when faced with a difficulty, I occasionally struggle to maintain an upbeat attitude. And I was like, what? Like, I almost feel that when life sucks, because sometimes it does, Sometimes I'm a little bit too cheery. Just like, oh, it'll be fine. It'll work out. Yeah. I dis- I totally disagree with this one, too, because mine was, well, the first couple sentences were just, your resilience level is relatively low. Adjusting of circumstances beyond your control does not come easy. I think that's totally wrong because I feel yeah. like my entire life I've been adjusting to circumstances yeah. beyond my control. That's just part of uh, living life. And I've... Uh, I've, I've made my way through some hairy situations. So yeah. yeah, I disagreed with that one totally, but at least I guess it gets you talking about that area. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. The next one is time. We were polar. We were polar opposites on yeah. this one. Yeah. And I was like, I kind of agree with it, except for the fact that none of us really got high in planner and I felt like you're a really big planner. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah. It depends on what it is. I mean, if it's, if it's something small, 
yeah, I'm, I'm not a big planner, but if it's like something big, like we're going on vacation, mm-hmm. and then that planning kicks in just to make things go smoother. But yeah, you are a dreamer and I'm a processor. Yeah. So they say that the dreamer is unscheduled and future and the processor is scheduled and present. So for me, I guess I'll quickly read like the strengths and everything to you guys. So for me, I'm very spontaneous, visionary. My drawbacks are I'm immobilized, unreasonable. My challenge is becoming more realistic because I dream. I look at the future. Yeah. So my strengths were punctual and paced. My drawbacks are compulsive and legalistic. I guess that's yeah. true. I'm the type of guy who likes the policies and mm-hmm. stuff at work yeah. because I can say we're not supposed to be doing this and this is why. So uh-huh. I guess that's true. And challenges, going with the flow. Yeah. I mean, that's the one I've struggled with. I'm better with it, much better than I used to be. I don't necessarily go with the flow at work. If I see something mm-hmm. needs to go in a specific direction, I make sure it goes that way. Yeah. But what makes me think of that is like vacation going on Mm -hmm. these big family vacations in years past where you have mom, stepdad, stepsister, all the kids, you know, 15 people on vacation Uh with you. Uh, that definitely taught me to go, go with the flow. So, yeah. But what I thought was really cool though here is, is it really does show that opposites attract, you know, because it said like your challenge is going with the flow. So I feel like, I kind of bring you out of that a little bit to be like, babe, it's okay. But my challenge is being more realistic. And I feel like since we've been together, you've kind of, that's still my challenge, but you've kind of helped me to also focus on, yes, I realize this is where you want to be in five years. And yeah, that house looks gorgeous, but how are we going to get there? What's going on today? And what do we have to tackle today? Because why are we looking at that? So it just, that one was interesting because it shows how opposites attract and really do help each other out. Right. Yeah. They definitely complement each other. It's it's nice having somebody to balance you in areas that you need to be balanced. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And then the last one is harmony. Yeah. And I think that's mostly just based off of like the answers that we gave, like our satisfaction and feeling like friends, like we were both like fully satisfied. So that's on top. Yeah. But then, then like the things that you feel not as satisfied, those kind of go on the bottom and you kind of discuss those. But I mean, nothing really stuck out because even like the one that you put low satisfied, you were kind of just like, oh, I really wasn't even thinking about that or I was looking at it in a different perspective. The ones where we had high satisfaction, I'm not going to go through all of them, but there yeah. are things like feeling like friends, financial management as a team, mm-hmm. goals and dreams. We're pretty much on the same track mm-hmm. with our, our yeah. goals and dreams, uh, in-laws and relatives. We got really lucky there because yeah. our families yes. really get together very well. They do. They're They're getting pretty close too, which... I think they hang out together to more than we hang out with them sometimes. They do. They do. And that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, serving with each other. And then the conflict ones are not conflict, um, satisfaction rather. One of them was uh, conflict management. And that probably just comes from, we know that's something we need to continue to work mm-hmm. on and get skills on things like that. I don't know. That's pretty much that in a nutshell. Yeah. And then, I mean, then you briefly touched on it, so I'm not going to go away over it, but it was just the deep love action plan that covers four dates. So, yeah. So that kind of goes deeper into this. And thank you, baby, for reading your email because I would have no idea it existed. <laughs> yeah. We'll do that and probably come back and touch base on again. We actually have a lot of this stuff from Les Pair to yes. uh, talk about and go over it's really a lot of great resources, a lot of good information. It's easy reading. He's got several books. I started reading one of them. They're humorous. We went to fight night. That was very funny uh-huh. and just a good, just a good time. Uh, it was almost like going to a, a stand up comedian, but getting like good marriage information out of it. And the book so far, easy reading these assessments, why we don't agree with everything in them. They're pretty darn accurate. You oh, know, yeah. I'd have to say 90% of it in here. I, I agree with it. Yeah. And when we originally took it, I had, I, I, I just, I thought it was the silliest thing ever. You so, were. Yeah. I remember I asked you, I was all excited. Like I had, like this big grin on my face. So what'd you think, babe? Cause I loved it. That was, that was just like a Facebook test. So stupid. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. But I was wrong. <laughs> all right. Well, anyway, that uh, brings us to the end of episode number 13 yes. of Love Over Coffee. And as always, we do love to hear from you. So if you take this test or if you've written or if you've read any of Les Parrott's books or any other marriage books, let us know. And if you love what you hear, please feel free um, just to like us, rate us, subscribe and share. And you can check us out at our website. And Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you think of anybody that would benefit from listening to this podcast, please share it with them. Go over and check out our Facebook page on Saturday morning 
mornings, mm-hmm. we have coffee conversations, which we'll probably yes. do after we get done wrapping this up. And that's yes. a fun little video we do that you can only see on Facebook. Yes. So go check that out. And uh, I don't know. You want to pray us out? Yeah, sure. I'll pray us out. Dear God, thank you just for letting us be able to uh, come here today and enjoy some delicious AeroPress coffee and also just discuss worshiping together and worshiping you, but also doing it side by side with Mike as there's just something so special when you worship together as a married couple. And Lord, we just thank you for this deep love assessment. And sometimes these things may seem so silly to us or we may say, well, my marriage is great, so why do I need to do it? But you know what? You gave Les and Leslie Parrott these skills and these talents to create these assessments, which will help us grow deeper in our marriages and grow deeper to you. So we thank you for that. We um, ask that we are always striving to grow closer to you and grow our marriages um, closer. And we love you and we pray for a great week and just for you to watch over us and to keep focused on you. Amen. Amen.